We'll see you then, Helen. Thank you very much for that. Well, there have been some reports this week that the National Disability Insurance Scheme is creating a bit of grief at the senior levels of the government, with uh, some apparently wanting to slow down the rollout. Not so, according to the Minister for Disabilities, Mitch Fifield. He insists the government is still committed to the full rollout of the NDIS and there is no move to slow it down. Mitch Fifield joins me now. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Hi, so let me start with that simple question. Will the NDIS still be delivered in full and on time? Uh, I'm absolutely determined to see the NDIS uh, delivered in full. Uh, this is uh, and on time. This is part of what is the core business of government, which is providing extra support uh, mm -hmm. to people who face uh, challenges for uh, reasons beyond their control. And will it be delivered on time? Now, I'm working uh, intently uh, on uh, a series of uh, bilateral negotiations uh, with each of the states and territories. This mm -hmm. is complex. Uh, and detailed work. Hmm. I'll, I'll, so, I'll, go to, I'll get to that, but is the commitment still to deliver it on the time frame that's been laid out? Well, the time frame is to have the full scheme delivered by 2019, uh, as I say, um, and this isn't being, you know, hmm. tricky or playing with words or anything, anything of that nature. Um, we have to land uh, a series of bilateral agreements with each jurisdiction. Uh, each uh, bilateral negotiation will follow its own path. Uh, and I said to the Senate when asked yesterday, uh, that negotiations with uh, New South Wales are going extremely well uh, and that uh, I hope to have uh, something to announce in the near future. But so why not, hasn't, but, why but hasn't not, this... But this is an important point, David. <coughs> mm. um, it's not possible uh, to uh, announce the conclusion of a bilateral agreement and, until it's been concluded. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we, we can't unilaterally, as the Commonwealth, declare that negotiations are over. It takes two parties sure. uh, so to what's, come together. Let me, t let me ask you about that. What's the hold-up with New South Wales' most populous state What's the hold-up in finalising this? What's the problem? Look, there, there is no hold-up. Uh, we're going through uh, an orderly uh, and methodical process of negotiation and discussion. About, uh, about what in particular right now? Because we're, we're pretty close. To, I think it's the end of this month you meant to have it done. Well, there, there are a range of issues which uh, which need to be worked through. Um, now, uh, you know, I don't want to cite any particular issues because... Uh, these, Why can't you tell us one? Well, because these are negotiations which uh, are taking place between both parties. I don't think it's helpful uh, to provide a, a public running commentary. But are we talking about money here? Are we talking about location oh, look, look, of uh, the, the rollout? Look, it's, it's, it's nothing uh, that, uh, that would be uh, a deal breaker. Uh, we're, we're just working through uh, the range of issues uh, that you would expect to be worked through in a bilateral negotiation. Of All this right, nature. so, well, let, let's go to that. Um, you're already collecting money from the increased Medicare levy, but the Commonwealth is holding onto that, not passing it to the states. Is that a problem for the states, for New South Wales at the moment? Uh, look, it's certainly not a problem for New South Wales. The, the previous government uh, put uh, on the table an offer that 25% uh, of the Medicare levy proceeds uh, would be given to the states and territories. Uh, and they laid out a timetable for that, which essentially involves uh, the, ju the jurisdictions passing particular benchmarks and that the states would then have uh, that money provided to them uh, to reimburse them for some and of the that costs happening? that they've incurred. Uh, well, um, the, the first thing that's got to happen is that uh, jurisdictions have to uh, sign on to uh, the bilateral agreement for uh, full statewide rollout. And the second thing that's got to happen is jurisdictions have got to meet the benchmarks that would release that money. So, so you've really got the, uh, the upper hand here, haven't you? You're, they don't get any money until they sign the bilateral agreement with you. Well, we, we are not uh, the, the prime source uh, of, uh, of the state's funds uh, for the NDIS. It's Pretty big chunk, though. Well, no, it, it's important to recognise that the scheme at full rollout will be uh, a $22 billion scheme. Uh, you know, $10 billion uh, comes from the states, essentially the money that they would have been putting towards disability services that they run if they weren't transferred to the Commonwealth. There's $3 billion, which is money that the Commonwealth would have been spending on its disability services uh, in the absence of the NDIS. And then there's a further $9 billion, uh, which will be the Commonwealth's new investment. Now, there's a, a portion uh, of the money that the states are putting towards the scheme, which the Commonwealth is providing from that half a percent increase in the Medicare levy. But that money flows uh, really on the basis of performance. Once states have achieved certain benchmarks, then they'll get that money. So what, but the what, money, are, the the money is, what are the benchmarks they have to meet to get the money? Well, it's uh, benchmarks as to uh, the percentage of uh, their jurisdiction uh, which has entered into the scheme. And ultimately, uh, the states have got to pass 50% uh, coverage uh, in their jurisdiction uh, on the basis of the agreement uh, 
put forward by the previous government before they can access the full funds. But, and in the but meantime, there will be other, that $3 billion dollars sits on the Commonwealth balance sheet and really helps the federal budget look better. Well, it's, it's Commonwealth revenue raised through Commonwealth taxation uh, and one of uh, the uh, preconditions in opposition that I put on uh, for our support for the increase in the Medicare levy was that the previous government put those proceeds in a dedicated fund uh, under the stewardship of uh, the future fund uh, to make sure that it could not <coughs> be raided for any purpose other than the NDIS. So uh, every dollar that is raised uh, by the half a percent increase in the Medicare levy will go to the NDIS and the states will get every dollar of the 25 per cent of those proceeds which the previous government offered. Let me come back to the timing of this. The trial phase is due to uh, be completed on the 30th of June next year. Is that still going to happen? Well, the, the trials, in a sense, uh, never conclude uh, services. But you transition from that point to full rollout. That, that's right. And that's but, still the time frame? Well, that, 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 that's right. The, the, the trials, um, in a sense, cease to be trials in the area where they are, and it just becomes a regular part of the scheme. Uh, the agenda is that from the middle of next year, uh, we'll progressively uh, move to roll out beyond the existing trial site. Mm -hmm. It's important to recognise that in the ACT, uh, it's a trial site, uh, but it's a whole of jurisdiction trial. So in effect, the transition to full scheme has already started in the ACT. Western Australia uh, is having a different sort of trial. Uh, they have an NDIS run trial site and a West Australian government run trial site. And at the conclusion of that, there'll be an evaluation and that will be one of the inputs for Western Australia to determine how they come into the scheme, which leaves uh, six uh, jurisdictions which uh, I'm in the middle of, uh, well not in the middle of, well progressed uh, in relation to bilateral agreements. And w will the full rollout still be done by 2019? Well that is, that is the target date. Um, as I say, um, we're working through uh, those uh, bilateral agreements at the moment. I've got to say, it sounds I, I, like there's some doubt now about this, this date. Well look, that, that, is, that, is, that is the target date that we have. Uh, but. Um, the target date uh, is a function of bilateral uh, agreements. Um, we're working to conclude those bilateral agreements. Uh, and uh, as I say, um, New South Wales, uh, things are uh, tracking extremely well. Uh, and we're working hard with the other jurisdictions how, as well. How do you decide, together with the states, I assume, where and how are you going to roll this out? In, I mean, yes, I understand the trial sites are there, but I think they cover about 30,000. The full rollout will cover 430,000. How do you decide? Um, where and how the rollout occurs. Does it go to those who have no coverage at the moment? What's the, what's the process? Sure. Well, uh, how, how that's determined, jurisdiction by jurisdiction, uh, is by negotiation. Uh, so uh, some states uh, are looking at having uh, a geographical rollout, moving region by region, uh, covering all age cohorts. Uh, now, part of uh, what's negotiated with jurisdictions uh, is the phasing of people who are currently receiving state supports, uh, the phasing of people who are currently receiving communal supports, uh, and the phasing of people who might not currently be receiving uh, supports. So. They're, they're the sorts of details that are being worked through, but you know, I, I, don't, I don't want uh, mm. you know, anything to be read uh, into uh, uh, the, the words, words that I'm using when I talk about uh, the importance of the bilateral agreements, uh, because I've got to emphasise that this is a cooperative venture between the Commonwealth sure. and the states and territories. Sure. We, we, can, okay. we cannot unilaterally declare that negotiations are concluded. Uh, it takes two signatures uh, to uh, affect okay. a bilateral agreement. For the Commonwealth's agreement. part, the reports this week of some hesitation in the Expenditure Review Committee about this, is there any move to slow down or spend less on the NDIS? We are not looking to cut a dollar from the NDIS. And you won't and, cut and a dollar? You, and you, well, we won't cut a dollar from the NDIS. Uh, and you, you only need to look uh, at the budget papers to see that in the Ford estimates mm -hmm. uh, we have the funding profile there uh, that's required uh, for the rollout of the scheme. And you'll still spend it on the time frame that's laid down? Well, we're, we're endeavouring to introduce the NDIS uh, as, as quickly as we can. Um, uh, I am not looking for ways, I'm not looking for, for reasons or rationales uh, to, to slow down uh, mm -hmm. the scheme. I want it to be out there as, as quickly. What about your colleagues, those in Cabinet? Not, not at all. Um, we want this 
to be rolled out as, as quickly as it can be. Uh, but I've got to emphasise that we're, we're not uh, the sole agent in this endeavour. Um, okay. uh, we, we work uh, with state and territory governments, they are our partners. Uh, there is nothing that we can do alone, uh, but we're working hard to move forward in concert uh, and to conclude agreements so we can deliver the scheme in full. Let me finally ask you this, Mitch Fifield. I, I know your uh, commitment and enthusiasm for the NDIS is, is clear. Uh, Scott Morrison, when he took the social services portfolio, described the NDIS as the jewel in the government's crown. We don't see he or the Prime Minister uh, talking much about the NDIS, visiting the trial sites, uh, owning it as a government initiative. If it's going well at the moment, why is that the case? Look, I've visited uh, trial sites with uh, the Prime Minister uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, he's, uh, he's been a, a when great... When was the last one? He's been a great supporter. Um, oh, I, I couldn't tell you off the, off the top of my head, but, uh, but, but on numbers of occasions, in both opposition and government, uh, I've been with the Prime Minister in trial sites. Uh, Scott Morrison, um, you don't need to go further than the, your quote that Scott sees the NDIS as the jewel in the crown, as part of the core business of government. It's one of the reasons why uh, we want to repair the budget, uh, is because you cannot have a good social policy uh, without a good budget policy, without a good economic policy. Um, that's what we're working hard on. All right, Disabilities Minister Mitch Farfield, good to talk to you about this.